right in today's session we will be covering a subject that is having a building and some trees and uh, maybe one or two vehicles okay so we will we'll see how to simplify a scene containing structure and trees so whatever we discussed in our previous videos on simplifying from photograph a place here also so i will not go into extensive details on this process of simplification because um, you could refer to my previous videos in that case right so i will provide the details in the link uh, below so you you could cover you could have a look at those videos and this, i mean understand the process of simplification a little bit more so this is the this is the reference that we will be taking for today's lesson right so uh, we we have to really check uh, we have to check uh, what is the width to height ratio of our paper so you can see the paper in front this is the width to height ratio of the paper so this this particular ratio that you can see on my device this seems to be a bit more wider than proportionally with respect to the its height uh, this seems to be a little bit narrower i mean little bit wider when it compare when i compare to the height to width ratio of the paper so that means i need to somehow li cut little bit on the width side so let us see uh, that is that is on the aspect ratio part but do we want the complete things in our reference or can we make a smaller frame of frame out of it so for that as i have seen i have shown in my previous video i have taken two l shaped papers i mean these are normal watercolor papers i have cut in l shape okay you you can also cut if you want it is the width is around 3 inches so you, you can cut that way and uh, probably uh, the frame looks okay to me so okay so somewhat i think approximately this will be approximately this will be our frame so uh, right so this seems to be good to me so that means uh, up to this pillar i am cutting right and uh, slightly below the car wheels i am cutting so i think this looks better than the entire thing because there are a lot of uh, lot of details here which probably we could remove now we have the frame set we will now go for a quick thumbnail so i have taken a simple sketchbook so here i will not go too much into details right so i will uh, i will basically define the major volumes and we'll see how how we can make the thumbnail right so let us take a frame and this frame also should be somewhat proportional to our paper ratio so this is not a proper rectangle and all you don't, you don't have to worry about that right so this the width to height ratio of this width to height ratio of this width to height ratio of this should be proportional uh, i find that uh, this seems to be a tiny bit wider but see you understand that so you have to keep that in mind right now let us let us make how many this is the one of the key line i am interested in where the where is the ground the the ground line basically so this if you really see this is around say the distance from here to here this from here to here is two times maybe it is one third of the paper so we if you define uh, this is a rough judgment so you don't have to really i mean take your scale and then measure it this is approximately here right i'm just to trying to ensure that the major shapes are placed in a 
in its with its proper placement and size so then i am interested in this particular structure so if you look at this 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 would have been the center so it is slightly off from the center so if this is the center maybe somewhere up to here this is coming so let us make a thin line here okay and i am worried about uh, maybe this particular structure line so maybe up to up to here is that line see i am i have drawn the line from here to here okay so this will in fact block it so where exactly that is blocking so maybe see if you take this width see this line corresponds to this particular line so take this line this to this this is more than half so somewhere here the the the, the this the nearby structure will come okay so i would have usually done all these things in my mind but now i am explaining the process see if you kind of uh, ensure that your major shapes are placed in its proper place with a reasonably proportional size then you will see, finally see that whatever drawing you make is is representative enough of your this one so maybe this i have slightly modified the frame because i think uh, we have made minor error in the width when we cropped it okay now we we have some building here okay some building here and we have a big shape of big shape of uh, what you call it as a tree see i'm not worried about uh how many branches are going here how many branches are here all those things i am not worried what we are interested in is the the overall what is the shape of it this looks something like a triangle sort of thing so i'll kind of i mean suggest that one it and it is almost touching here so this would be something like the the overall shape is something like this you don't you don't have to draw this this is something you have to keep in mind okay now <coughs> and now this is almost uh, this is not in fact touching the ground now let us make the major other lines so this line may be at the from the base of this slightly from this side you have you have a line coming this side and you have to see the angle see this angle now you have to see and after some some gap there is another angle coming okay see this is all i mean you can make some mistakes no problem not a problem this is some rough placement in fact okay now there is a vehicle here and this vehicle is partly cutting the this particular line above and below so this vehicle will have it will be it is somewhere here and you have this car little bit of its side plane is seen so i'll see and there is another car here and another bigger car okay so i would say i will make it this little little smaller smaller in size so that it looks little bit little bit uh, away from us you don't have to make make it exactly the same car you could you could always you can alter it these are the two cars and you have some the foliages now you 
make the leaf the foliage shape which will roughly follow this particular shape that we have drawn Now we can make all this drawing. Okay. Now here also you will find some all right. Now we have this. Just go, go uh, define little bit of detail, okay. You have to be a little careful about the architectural structures here now. Now there is some white area here. I'm a little bit taking care of this white spots okay. not worrying too much about the exact details only thing is that you should worry little bit about the tonal tonal stuff Now here, uh, if you really want to go for the details, you can see a little bit of some window is seen here. Okay, something is here. And here you will find that there is a, uh, somewhere, uh, up to here, you have this, some bush kind of thing. Okay, now here you have something much more darker. So here I we wouldn't we don't have to really worry about the structure and all. You can just make it darker. Why? Because we are avoiding details. We are avoiding details, so we don't really need to know to Somewhere here you will have some perspective lines and all. So you can just keep that into consideration. So this is lighter in tone. This is darker. And here you have some darker tones. Okay. And somewhere here you have these darker tones you have you can keep pair respect to all these things see these things are something that we will define when we really make the details Now you have a lot of shadows here, a big shadow here, it is very much important for the lighting and here is some shadow for the, this bush, we can decide later whether we need to keep that or not and there is another shadow for the distant building and there is some, some structures, some 
a ball or something here which we don't have to really worry about at this point. Now we have this car falling in the shadow area. So you can have some shadow for this. We can have another shadow for this. I think we have done reasonably reasonable details to this. We don't need to more too much details, okay. some sky or something here okay. so the major light is coming here now you can have some I mean, direction and line or something and you can have some people here and some shadows for these guys also and maybe another nearby person coming working here okay. maybe one or two people here yeah. and you can then for some branches and other things okay so this is this is sufficient for the drawing part so you don't really uh, need too much details see once we make the painting we will see what how much we should give the details okay we will decide all the other details at that time now overall this is a very simple tonal study so uh, that we have made just to ensure that we have paid attention to the major elements we have some clarity in our mind see once we make this what what we do is we have noted almost all the details of this now and we have some reasonably good amount of clarity in our mind okay so that is that will pay a lot of benefit going forward okay so we'll do that now we'll do the drawing in the watercolor paper now right right now we have to make the drawing in the watercolor paper okay so somewhere, if you remember, somewhere here we will make I will not be explaining too much now See, I will I'll make it very loose and very simple structure So it might It might deviate a li little bit from what we have uh, in the reference or or in the thumbnail see we we got some level of clarity right so now now what we are now what we are looking for is a loose drawing okay.
just marking where this uh, white I should leave. So that I, that we should leave a little bit of uh, with care. And then the rest I think we can we can decide when the things are properly defined. When the shape is properly defined with painting, we can we will give the rest of the details. But white we need to leave in advance. So I am just thinking about those small uh, window. Now this wheel now we have a lot of small details which we will not be covering and we have we have this bush okay so we will No, no details, just deciding where I should roughly place it. Okay. Now this much is sufficient I think and if you really look at there are some some kind of uh, architectural details. I think I will make it a little bigger. Okay. <clears throat> now we are done with that area. So let us make. There is a small wall kind of a thing, and there is a distant building also somewhere with some arch kind of thing. Okay. I will not be worrying too much about that. Now the foliages. Okay, is somewhat the branch is somewhat coming bending towards this. I'll try to define that. And there is another big branch here. Okay. Now this this is falling towards the ground and there are some other other big foliages which I'm not worried about. Now <coughs> There is some some kind of uh, what do you call it as uh, fence or something which I'll just mark it. I may not I mean really worry about that. And here we have What I will do is, I will not make the side plane, I will just define it as if it is a little, very less of a side plane is shown, seen here. And I guess I don't want to complicate the things. some people yeah, coming here and there okay so and some big shadow line here some kind of shadow line here maybe other shadows here okay now I think we are done with the drawing so now we'll go for the painting face see as we have described earlier this is going to be a very looser very simple representation not not detailed representation right so you have to bear that in mind that is the reason we have we didn't pay too much of attention on the drawing right right we will now go for the watercolor washes first and then the details i re-emphasize 
this will be a very simplistic representation of that not very detailed one right. now coming to my palette as I have described earlier in uh, in my previous videos this is my palette and uh, I have arranged it from cool to warm sort of thing not not very precisely but somewhat this is cerulean blue ultramarine blue cobalt blue mauve violet sap green olive green burnt umber this is supposed to be raw umber burnt sienna crimson lake this is orange permanent orange this is a color that i have taken for this painting but uh, lemon yellow i don't usually use this this is indian yellow and uh, this is yellow ochre raw sienna this is something that i picked up for this painting because a lot of a lot of reds are there this is vermilion red and uh, this is some i mean residue colors from previous painting so i won't be using most of uh, many of it i might use some of these blues and violet or mauve i may, i will use burnt sienna i will use orange and red and this because of some yellowish uh, highlights are there i might use a lemon yellow i will see if i i might use this for the car also the nearby car but i am not very sure now okay, i will i usually i decide the colors depending upon uh, the outcome of the washes here is some white i may i may not use And regarding the brushes, I use, I have uh, some round brushes I'll be using for this. This is a big round brush, 18 size. This is a medium round brush, synthetic, it's hard, but if I apply water, it will be soft. And this is a smaller round brush, again, synthetic. And this is a line, liner brush for small lines and details, right? So let us begin. So we, we know that uh, see watercolors usually we should do the underlying washes first for example the skies skies first we might have to do some layers here the skies we may put we might put the some suggestion for the background building right then see there are some yellow highlights for the for the buildings and uh, now not for the building but for these bushes and some of these trees I might give some suggestion of that first and then we will go for the red color because red is little bit darker in tone so we will be applying it slightly later right then we will finish the uh, fill the wash the road and then fill the details that is my rough plan okay so everything will be very rough so no not with a lot of details See the sky is very very pale here, so I might use some uh, I, I might use some raw sienna. Okay, I might use some raw sienna because there is some warmth I am seeing there. So I am seeing some warm color there. So I'll use some. I'm not worried about this building for now because see this this is orangish anyway if some yellow warm colors are already there underlying it is not going to affect in any way so that is i'm not worried about this and uh, now some of this warm colors for the sky and uh, in fact i might go for some some light I am seeing some, I don't know, some bluish violet sort of thing, but very light again. So I will just maybe finish it this. I will just merge it like this. I am just covering this area. If you want you can drop in some clouds or something but I am not really finding much and there is some suggestion of cloud already here so I am not really worried about that thing 
now we i think what what i what i will do is i'll probably uh, i'll probably make some suggestion for the bush okay because i want some highlight for the bush so what i do is i will use little bit of uh, lemon yellow because i want some this is very bright lemon yellow and i wash it and take some orange color also just lemon yellow it's very warm color it is in fact okay so some some warm stuff i want something on the ground also sort of warmth okay and similarly maybe some warmth here also some somewhere wherever i think i need some high some warm tones i'll just i'm just mixing some warms okay something is spreading here immediately you can probably wash so we we are still forgetting about the underlying blue color so we will do the background building later so i am at this point i i am thinking i will immediately drop in some green color to get some initial washes for the trees okay so you have to be little fast you know and it is lot of greens are there and lot of warm color also is there so i'll take some warm green also okay so lot of very very quick warm washes i would go for bigger brush because i want it should be filled very quickly and i am and we are not going for any precise details okay lot of bleeding will happen here that is i want it a lot of bleeding should happen okay lot of bleeding and other things should happen here it is very likely to fall down so it will be very careful it is very likely that these things will fall down very easily so i'm just immediately making some edges so that they don't really i'm pushing it away because due to since the board is kept at an angle it might very quickly fall down due to gravity so
lot of details here in some darker tones here also we are forgetting about this now but that is okay for the time being we will see how best we can address that now this area will <coughs> we need some lighter tones so we'll give some lighter tones now wash it take some yellow tones maybe little orange and little green to make a warmer version now here now we have to really be worried about the edge of this cars and other things we have to be little precise and give some negative painting by negative painting means you define the outline outline of the car by this if you think if you see there are a lot of darker tones here okay now maybe we can now go for this you can define some of this also talking uh, too much now because i am trying to focus on these edges now okay we'll give some darker tones later now that we are somewhat done at this point maybe we can go for the roads now okay we'll have to wash these brushes very thoroughly because it is having green colors the road cannot have green color so i am washing it very thoroughly i'm using the same brush but i'm washing it very thoroughly and i'm using little little bluish color okay and maybe a little bit of violet also and i'm making this color here to be frank immediately we should go for the warm color here okay so what i will do is take a little bit of uh, raw sienna and orange raw sienna you see it is very very pale color of raw sienna okay very pale raw sienna and i will immediately wash this area so that it is little softer we want lot of light there okay so i'm
try not to bleed here okay it will, it will very quickly it will bleed see here I am just washing because other darker color will come and then it will be covered up not a problem now that we have these things done pretty much we can now go for this building right so when you make this building you should be careful that you don't uh, uh, apply anything on the place where we, it is supposed to be white so we'll take care of that Right, now we will have to go for the building now. I have cleaned some of this area so that I have some space for mixing my reds. Now if you look at the reference, it is almost very uh, orangish red at many places. So what I did is, I mean what I am going to do is, I will take some vermilion red okay, and I will try to see, I will try to mix with orange not sure if this is good enough this seems to be a little bit more reddish so I am taking little yellow I am taking little bit of yellow ochre yellow ochre or rosy and anything should be fine okay I am, I am taking in fact I am taking both yellow ochre and rosy one of that is fine now let us this should be done with quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, accuracy okay. I'll go to, I'll switch my brush to smaller brush because I wanted a little bit more accuracy there at the corners because the corner should be little it's an architectural stuff so I want the corner should be little sharp okay. you don't have to really worry too much I'm just only worrying about this white edges that I'm leaving that's it white edges I am leaving apart from that I am not really worried too much I'm not worrying about the the green area and all because that is okay. You can you can always paint the green on top of that because that that green needs to be little darker this edge you should be little careful that it is vertical because you, it cannot be slanting now you see it is little bit more darker in color it is getting slightly darker so i'm using little bit of violet tones to make this darker now okay. using little bit of dialect uh, violet tones because see what happens is that this is uh, as it goes towards the towards the ground less and less sunlight will be hitting this and you will you will find it more and more darker in fact
we have to be doing a little bit of negative painting so that the edge of this looks uh, what do you call it as edge of this looks little precise Now, I need some thicker consistency paint. Same, same step because I need to now define the, the architectural details. This, all these things. We should be little careful. I'm taking a touch of burnt sienna also. finding it little difficult because the camera is blocking my uh, working angle okay so if you really look at I'm trying to make some kind of dry brush stroke kind of thing I'm going for smaller brush little thicker pigment okay now going for some details not going very precise for any of this okay. because if you go for precise then that is not the that, is, that was not our approach anyway I'm just trying to give the major lines that's it which will, which is the, I mean, which actually defines this particular building, otherwise, and not worry too much otherwise. this that is done now we will go for this particular building see if you really look at this is this is not perfect but we are not we don't need it to be perfect we don't want it to be perfect so I am taking a darker tone darker red and little bit of violet and I am making this particular building darker red a little bit of more violet see I don't want any precise details for this so I'm just making a this particular building I'm just
ಕರ್ಕಳ you you may think that it is too much of dark and we are going too much of dark but you will it should be okay using some blue and making this shadow uh, it is very dark but i think it, it should be okay now we need some some more shadows for this particular tree but that shouldn't be this much what you call it is this much dark it is slightly less darker no this and all here some darker tones are there we'll we'll see i mean what we we need to do here and all so something needs to be done here just softening it on with hand it is perfectly fine if you touch with the hand not a problem okay now i think we need some more shadow here which can be i think blue I'm touching a little bit of uh, bond there because it is not very sharp. These shadows are not very sharp. Okay. Now I would say I will sprinkle some water here because. i want some some merging should happen here yeah. i don't want any anything very precise going on here okay now let us see if we need something for the building so there is some background building happen there so you'll see what we need to do it's little bluish in color so what i will do is I'll use the brush is dirty what i do is take some cobalt to blue okay and uh, maybe make it little lighter with whatever color is here just to dull it down little bit and i just define this buildings we have to do get to be careful about the edges here on my kind of negative painting see this was i wouldn't usually go for this kind of an approach usually but today i'm going because i thought of making the edges little yellowish you know i am not 
playing too much for this particular work because this is not the this is not our first lesson okay so if you really want more more details more explanation maybe you could watch first watch my some of my previous videos and then come back to this you can watch it fully now and uh, any 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 doubt any 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 clarity if you think you are missing you can ask me in the comment or ask me as a question or you can watch my previous videos so you will find lot of lot of i mean i mean disturbances here because of the water sprinkle that is okay okay now we we need the car and other things needs to be defined and we need lot of things for the what do you call it as the branches and other things so let us make the branches first so for the branches what i will do is i'll take a lot of uh, burnt sienna little thicker pigment okay and i will use the same area because mixing it with a little bit of green is okay for the because this is going to be the part of the tree itself so i am using a little bit of this is i mean ultramarine blue it is getting very it is getting very greenish because if you see this ultramarine i mean the the burnt sienna in fact it contains warmer tones yellowish tones so if you mix that with the blue stuff you are likely to get greenish marks so should be okay i mean you understand why it is happening i'm doing some negative painting so that this branch looks as if it is coming from in be in between the leaves okay now we need something for here also a lot of ranges you don't have to exactly do one to one i mean one to one mapping of uh, what is there in the reference and uh, if you don't exactly you don't have to do that you can just try to suggest that there are something in between and the branches then coming out kind of thing you have to it should it should see it should bend a lot it appears that it is bending it off wherever there are white gaps try to create some branches in between that so that it looks more convincing okay now we need a little bit more details for the branches okay so we need smaller brushes liner brushes so i'll take liner brush this is a little time consuming activity but you cannot avoid it so if you want you can you don't have to follow exactly the way it is done here in this because it will all be different to from what is there in the reference so it should match with how you are getting your in your washes how how does it look where are the white gaps i mean there are where it is where you feel it is appropriate to have some branches you have to i mean make the branch there not exactly where i am doing okay cuz i am doing to match with what is there on my paper just 
don't think too much okay there is, there is some kind of uh, fencing sort of thing which i might want to do make it now I am taking a, that whatever this we have, burnt sienna and maybe I am taking a little bit of yellow ochre. Uh, maybe I will use a little bit of a touch of white also I will mix to have some kind of tonal difference. Okay. Not getting the difference. I will go with the dark tone itself. Later we can enhance. So you have to be careful about the perspective of that on the top. And the distant one should be nearby. some kind of a wall and other things I think that, okay. now we have to go for this car and other things Okay, now we have to make the these cards. We have to really define, uh, decide what kind of colors and other things that you may need. So I would say I would think I will make it very dull. Uh, here, this for this I will see if I can make some colors. Okay, so for this, for the far end one, I will probably use uh, this color itself. What is that? The bluish color. You have to be very careful about where it is cutting the front end car. Okay. Make sure. Letting out some color. being little I'm slowing down little bit because I want these are very minor strokes but they should be little precise okay so I'm just creating some shadows for this. Shadow area, I'm just leaving it like that. Okay, we'll see if something we need to do it later. And now for this this particular car, we need, uh, we can decide, should, do we really need the same color or should we go for that? This is something, some other color. So I would it will be I would say it will be little stupidity if I go for the same color because 
uh, really it is not required we are putting additional effort but let me see if some some justice we can pay to that color though it is not essential we may uh, sometimes we tend to do that right so i'm what i'm taking is i'm taking little bit of white color also because that seems to be little opaque in nature okay so i'm using lemon yellow little bit of orange and then touch of white also because it is this area gets a lot of white okay a lot of lighter color it is in fact okay so i'm not exactly following that that car's shape because i am showing lesser of uh, what you call it as side planes not not exactly in that way because i have changed the angle slightly a bit i'm just trying to see where the lighting is there where the shadows are there then i will take some darker tone for the back area it is conflicting with it is conflicting with the tone here i am not happy that it is conflicting with the tone on the trees so what i am doing is i am changing the color to a little bit orangish color okay so i am changing the color of that car okay it is it may not be a, a good thing to decide at this point half the way we should have thought of that earlier but let us see how best we can we should have taken care that in the beginning itself so i'm just lifting some of this taking some some darker tone uh, because i want it should be little darker in nature we are changing the entire color scheme now let this be dry it then we will see what best we can do we need some darker tones for the previous car also see we are constantly evaluating our decisions and then correcting it that's it don't think that we are making mistakes and all we are just trying to evaluate our decision and thinking if do we need to make any corrections if we felt so we are making it that's it okay now we will see how we can uh, address this particular issue now if you look at this side it is little reddish in color so i'll take little red color okay pale red and i will first make this area red again 
being careful that it doesn't touch the car. Yes, it should not touch the car. Okay. Now let us wait until this gets dry. But in the meantime, if you want, you can make some suggestions for these buildings and all. So what I will do is, I'll make some dry brush strokes. Just making some suggestion for this building, okay? I think that's it for that building. Except for the, the building. Now we, we can make some characters here. Right. Now we'll see what, what can we do on this. I'm not happy with this the foreground car, which we should have been a point of attraction for this. Now let us make some I mean some like this. Let us make some limited uh, details for this. Making vertical lines is little tough. Okay. You may find it little it is a little tough in fact. I'm just rubbing it with hand so that some of my mistakes are covered. Now we will make some people around. Okay, let us make some people. You, if you want, you can uh, maybe you can draw them, but I wouldn't tend to draw usually. I directly used to define people. for some dark color all the colors are dry now 
but I'm trying to get some dark color. This we need to make some changes. I, I really do not know how exactly we should make that change, but we have to make some changes. It is light falling area, so still there wouldn't be much light, but a uh, shadow. But still, I'm trying to make some shadow here. Okay. Now for this car, we need good shadow. And uh, uh, shadow means see the the underneath portion of the car, the wheels, etc. All should be properly hooking to the ground. not happy with this car but I think we should we should leave it that, that because some mistake happened and we have to sometimes just leave it that
just trying to fix it by some approach but I don't know whether I'm just trying to make something to bleed into this and then kind of uh, making it little what do you call it as little mystic so that it might look better just hoping that it might look better I don't know whether it is looking or not but I will keep it like that together changing the color of the car. I don't know. Let you can decide whether this worked or not. Usually, I wouldn't do all those things. So I'm just trying to cover my mistake. So sometimes mistakes do happen, and you have to see if you you find some way to cover it. Okay. And this is something that some. Um, white touches I am making just so that these guys do pop up they are kind of visible sometimes they may not be visible otherwise I think we are pretty much done about this so if you really want you can make a lot of other details okay so but I wouldn't do that there are some drops here so maybe I just make some something out of it just to cover that So I think that's it for today's session. So if you look at, as I always say, a lot of mistakes that we, we have done, but it's okay. After all, our life is filled with a lot of mistakes and we learn from many of it. And if you're able to learn, then you progress.
so that's it for today's class now we will uh, we'll take out the tape now now uh, i think we have given sufficient details see if you look at the i mean each individual items there are a lot of mistakes but our approach was to make it very very simple not without much of details uh, not with much details so uh, we have paid reasonable amount of attention to that i think now we will take out the the tape just one final touch i will give because i will just suggest some face for this this guy is here okay that's it we take out the tape please keep practicing a lot of mistakes will happen when you do watercolors and don't worry too much about the mistakes you make learn from them and use that learning in improving your future works that's it there are no 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 artist in the world who didn't make mistakes while painting so that's it for today's lesson hope we'll see in the next lesson until then keep practicing happy painting bye